Good morning, everyone. I have nothing to disclose. Fundamentals of laparoscopy surgery, or FLS, was developed in the late 90s, and the first FLS testing was done in 2004. The results from the first five years have been studied previously. The purpose of our study was to, uh, was to report the results of FLS tests from uh, the past nine years in order to evaluate current trends and the need to update scoring practices. And this is a quality initiative of the SAGES FLS committee. A representative sample of the FLS exam data that was prospectively collected by the FLS staff from 2008 to 2016 was analyzed. The de-identified data included demographics such as specialty, postgraduate year, or PGY level, along with scores for the cognitive and the manual exams. Pearson correlation was used to assess associations between the manual and the cognitive exams. Internal consistency for the manual exam was calculated using Chrome by Alpha. Generalized linear models were used to assess trends over time and PGY level, along with pass-fail rates. Statistical significance was considered when p-value was below 0.05. Uh, the data for around 7,500 test takers was available. However, some had missing data in terms of specialty or postgraduate year, and some were before 2008. So we excluded those, and at the end, we analyzed around 7,200 FLS test exams. 6.4% were PGYs 1 and 2, 84% um, 3 to 5, 2.8% fellows, and 6.7% attending surgeons. 64% of the test takers were male, 93% were from a general surgery background, 6.2% gynecology, and 0.9% urology. When looking at trends over time and PGY level, this table looks at the differences in the scores between the year and PGY level for the two exams. So for cognitive exam, recent years and higher PGY levels scored significantly better than previous years and junior residents. For the manual exam, previous years and junior residents scored better than recent years and higher PGY levels. The correlation between the manual and the cognitive exam scores was 0.09, which is reflected in this graph, whereby x-axis is the manual exam scores, y-axis is the cognitive exam scores. Each number represents the PGY level, and red is for junior residents, and blue and green are for the higher PGY levels. And ultimately, we can see that there, is not, there does not seem to be a real correlation uh, between the different levels and the scores they get for the two components of the exam. The correlation for the five tasks of the manual exam was moderate for all of them. The lowest correlation was between endoloop and intracorporeal knot tying, and the highest correlation was between extra and intercorporeal knot tying. The internal consistency of the manual exams was high with 0.73, which suggests that the tasks all assess the same overall construct, which in this case is uh, basic laparoscopic technical skills. With the removal of any one of the tasks from the exam, the consistency dropped to between 0.65 and 0.71, suggesting that each task adds something unique to the overall score. For pass-fail rates, if you look at the red parts of this table, we can see that most test takers did not fail both parts of the exam. However, there was a higher percentage of test takers across all levels who passed the manual exam but failed the cognitive exam. And the odds ratio of a PGY 3 plus passing the exam was 1.8 times higher than a PGY 1 and 2 passing the exam. So in summary, higher PGY levels and recent years scored higher in the cognitive exam and lower PGY levels and previous years scored higher in the manual exam, 
which is reflected in the low correlation of the manual and cognitive exams. We believe the reason for this is that for the manual exam, the junior residents are more motivated to practice to reach the previously established proficiency benchmarks. There was also a high, a high internal consistency in the manual exam, and overall there was low failure rate. In conclusion, data demonstrates that higher PGY levels are more likely to pass the exam, which is something to be considered by the program directors, and they also tend to perform better on the cognitive skills. And since the removal of any one of the tasks from the uh, manual exam decreased the consistency, there is no evidence to justify removal of any one of the tasks from the exam. For future direction, our analysis does not tell us if the content is still current in terms of knowledge and the expected skill level. And also, we do not know if the definition of the minimum qualified candidate should be adjusted according to the changing standards of training. These require additional studies that were recently done for the cognitive exam and are in progress for the manual exam. Thank you. Question from over there. Adnan Al Saidi, Seattle. Thank you for a very uh, nice presentation. I, I want to. I think you alluded to this, but I want to push you a little bit on this. In the in the sense that, do people pass what they have to pass? And in yeah. essence, in, if you put the benchmark that you have to pass FLS at, by PGY two, will you get the same results? Is it a PGY level, or is it because they're getting close to the point where they have to pass it? I mean, with the expected um, uh, the benchmarks. Well, I, I just, um, obviously we cannot fully know the reason for this, but we believe the reason is that um, the PGY 1 and 2s uh, might be more motivated to practice for those to reach the benchmarks, whereas uh, more senior level residents or fellows and attendings uh, might not be actually practicing and they're just taking the exam. And we believe maybe that's why there's a difference in, in the scores. Thank you. Uh, Ali, very nice uh, presentation. I think it's really, really important when you have an exam like this that's a high state exam that the, um, that the properties of the, of the test be constantly evaluated. Uh, I guess one of the questions that comes up uh, is whether the test is too easy and, um, and therefore, you know, wh why do it? Uh, do you have any sense uh, about the time that is spent uh, preparing for the, uh, the test? and the pass rate, that is, if people took it fresh without any uh, practice whatsoever, mm -hmm. in the original uh, psychometrics, about 18% of people would have failed the test. And of course, our, our failure rate is lower now, hopefully it reflecting the fact that people are passing and therefore the failure rate uh, has come down. We want people to not to fail, we want them to acquire the skills. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that we could get at the data whether the test is actually too easy or whether it's in fact the, the stimulation for practice that we're trying to achieve that is the reason for the low uh, failure rate? I think um, we don't have data in terms of how much people are practicing to uh, before writing the exam. However, um, we believe the most likely the reason for this is that, again, people are just uh, practicing for the manual exam since it's available for, for most of the test takers to practice on. Um, and I think um, there's that's also why maybe for the future studies, um, we're looking at the definition of the minimum qualified candidate, and ultimately, if we see that there's a difference than before, then maybe the pass-fail score would be adjusted um, according to the current standards. So, yeah. Thank you. Very Thank much. you.